So far, we've had a lot of discussion on how the PMU will supply power to connected devices, but there is the other side of the coin to consider as well, which is how we command the PMU to turn those connected devices on and off as required. In a conventional automotive electrical setup, we usually divide the turning on of the vehicle's electronic systems into two stages, called main and enable. The main power is turned on first, powering up electronic control systems of the vehicle such as the ECU, dash, and any loggers, but doesn't send powers to the injectors or ignition coils. The enable stage is turned on next, and this is where we power up the actuators that the engine actually needs to run. The power supply is staged like this to allow us to turn on the main power to download logs, look at data on the dash, adjust settings in the ECU, or even crank the engine without it being able to start. This is useful for building oil pressure, setting base timing, checking compression, or any tasks such as. When a system like this is implemented with fuses and relays, the items that receive power at each stage are hardwired into the harness construction itself. The relay coil wires will be directly connected to physical switches, meaning that the only purpose that switch can ever have is to control that particular relay and its connected components. That being said, we still need to have switches and buttons in our system to control things. The beauty of using a PMU is that the input signals from these switches and buttons are decoupled from the direct activations of its outputs, meaning that if we need to make changes to the system later on, we can accomplish this in software without having to rewire anything. This means we're going to need a control pad of some form, and the majority of PMU manufacturers have tried to make this as easy for us as possible. There are a couple of common series of keypads on the market, being the 3K G1 series by Greyhill and the PowerKey Pro series by Blink Marine that PMU manufacturers have chosen to support. Both of these keypads communicate to the PMU via CAN on the J1939 or CAN Open protocols. We won't delve into the specifics of CAN communication in this course, but if you'd like to know more about CAN communications, we do have another course dedicated to that topic. These keypads were initially developed for the heavy industrial and marine markets, meaning they have excellent ingress protection ratings and are very robust. This also makes them perfect for our race car purposes. You'll need to confirm with your PMU manufacturer that the keypad you would like to use is compatible, but most of the PMU manufacturers also directly sell one of these keypad series, meaning they'll have communication profiles already configured in their software. While it'll usually be possible to get another brand of keypad working with a particular PMU, provided the PMU's CAN configuration software provides enough flexibility, I'd recommend purchasing a PMU and a keypad as a pair from the same company, as being able to make use of the predefined communication profiles will save you lots of time and headaches down the line. Let's have a look at an example of setting up one of these keypads now and show some of the excellent features that you can take advantage of. The example we'll go through will once again be controlling our wiper motor, but in this instance we're going to use our CAN bus enabled keypad for this. Now this is sold by uh, ECU Master along with their PMU-16, so there are really excellent uh, linking CAN profiles in the software that makes this keypad really easy to use and get the most out of, but this is just a Blink Marine Power Key Pro Series keypad. Now, a couple of features of these keypads that I really like are on the back we've got nice simple mounting, uh, we've got a membrane for sealing, and the whole thing itself is actually sealed as well. Uh, so really good ingress protection ratings. Each of these uh, button positions can obviously be read individually, and you can get translucent keycaps that fit into these positions that indicate what that key will actually do. And every one of these is individually uh, backlightable to a different color as well. So not only do you get a keypad, you actually get a bank of indication lights that uh, say maybe whether that function is currently enabled. We'll go through setting that up and we'll show those different colors in practice. So the wiring for these keypads is really simple. Uh, on the back here, we've got six wires. There's power ground, can high, can low, and then there's actually two here that uh, come with heat shrink on them. They're for an RS-485 protocol hookup, which is not something you're likely to be using in the automotive world. So I wouldn't be worrying about those, but we get all this functionality from this keypad with only our four wires, power ground, can high, and can low. So I've got that wired in. We'll just pop this down and turn our power supply on again. Make sure our PMU is switched on. We've got our indication light. And once again, over to our software. Uh, just double checking we are connected, so everything's good to go. 
so the software is actually already set up for our wiper operation from a previous example that we've shown. What I'm going to do is show how to integrate the CAN keypad into our profile here and then change our wiper setup. So a press of the button will turn the wiper speed on low. Another press of the button will change that to high speed and then pressing the button again will actually turn the wiper motor off. So I can come in here and I can set up a CAN bus keypad. And I'm going to call this, uh, we'll actually just leave it with the default name of KB1. Uh, you can have multiple keypads in a vehicle. Uh, often it's really common to see one on the uh, sort of center stack just to the left hand side of the driver, but also down in the center console area, there might be a different one with different features as well. The driver might not need to reach when he's actually in race mode. We've got a four by two, seven color keypad here, so we can change to that setting. A CAN bus that it is wired into is CAN2 and the CAN open nodes and the CAN ID uh, are still going to be absolutely the default ones because this is still as it was delivered out of the box. So I can leave those as default and I can click on one of these buttons, any of these buttons and we can set that up. So I'm going to click on this button here. I'm going to change its name from K button 1 to K wiper control. And it is going to be a latching switch. Its first state will be zero, but its last state will be two. So what that means is as we press that button, it will cycle through the state. So if it's zero, it will switch to one. If it's one, it will switch to two. And if it's two, it will switch back to zero and it will latch those modes as we give it a single press on that keypad. Now for state zero color, we've got none, which would be correct because that would correspond to being off. So we wouldn't want a light. For our state one color, we've got green. Our state two color we've got orange. I'm just going to change that to blue because in my sort of thinking orange and red are warning indicators uh, whereas in state two we'd be running the wiper motor in high speed and that would be a, a, a standard state not a warning state. So I wouldn't want orange there. So I'm going to select that as okay. Select that as okay. Now there's one more thing I need to do here to get the system up and running. There's actually two more things I need to do to get this system up and running. The first of which being I need to come across to my configuration and I need to enable the CAN2 termination resistor. Uh, now that comes back to how a CAN bus system is wired. Uh, you need a termination resistor at either end of the network bus. Uh, currently our ECU Master USB to CAN interface has one and now our uh, ECU Master PMU has one as well. So we've got those uh, termination resistors either end of the bus which should get the network operating as we need. Uh, currently our keypad here is actually wired to, it's a plus 12 volt line is wired to an output on the ECU master. So I'm going to have to turn that output on to actually give our ECU, pad, uh, ECU sorry our keypad power. So I've got that in wired into output 11. So in our software here I can generate a power output. Uh, we won't call that output C, we'll call this output keypad. And it is a single pin, we're not running any parallel outputs here. And it's output 11. Now currently that's got an inrush current setting of 120 amps. That's going to be fairly excessive for our little keypad here. Uh, in fact, I would say a CAN bus keypad here is going to have absolutely negligible uh, inrush current. Uh, so I'm going to set that just off the bat to 2 amps and our maximum current I'm going to set to be one amp. Uh, keypads like this are purely electronic devices and they're going to draw very small amounts of current. Uh, one amp uh, wiring to it can absolutely handle long term, so that's not going to cause us any issues. Uh, I'm going to give it a default power state of just on or off. What that is going to do is it's going to mean if the PEMU is powered up, so we're providing power to that 12 volt switched pin on it and it's got its power connection to its main stud, it will turn that output on. Which is probably what we'd want in this situation because we'd be using the keypad for main control of the vehicle. So when we turn that battery isolator on and we power up the PMU, we're going to have immediate access to our keypad as well. So if I click OK, we should be able to see, yep, our keypad is doing a wee startup sequence of flashing there. Uh, that lets us know it's now been provided with power. So on back to our keypad setup, just double checking that setup is our latching switch. That should be excellent. So if I press this top button here now, yep, we can latch that into state one, which we set as a color of green. 
we can latch that to state 2, which we set as a color of blue, and then it'll latch back to being off. So to get that controlling our wiper motor like we want here, I can go into our wipers module, not our table there, I'll go into our wipers module and change our input channel. Instead of being our wiper speed table, we can change that to be our can wiper control keypad button. And because our latching states are going to have the same numbers, we shouldn't have to change anything here. So we can select OK, just get a hold of our wiper motor. We should be able to go to slow speed, high speed, and then turn it off. Excellent. And our motor did actually overrun a little bit there as well. I think we've still got our brake settings uh, disabled. So we're going to change that back. So we should have our low speed, high speed, we can turn that off. And you'll notice that uh, if we're in the high speed and we turn the wiper motor off, it actually defaults back to the low speed uh, before getting to that park switch and then breaking those motor terminals. The reason for that is, is uh, moving back to that low speed, there's just less current running through the motor, so there's less energy in the system. So it's not as harsh on the electronics and the PMU to provide that motor braking functionality. So while this example only shows a single button input, it's easy to extrapolate this out further to the rest of the elements in the vehicle that you want to control. And you can see how powerful and flexible a PMU with a CAN bus keypad can be. In this module, we've looked at using a control panel to send commands to our PMU. This is usually done via CAN communication, with the two most common keypads on the market being the Greyhill 3K G1 series and the Blink Marine Power Key Pro series. Both these keypads have changeable button labels, adjustable backlighting, and various indicator lights as well. It's highly likely that other CAN-enabled control panels will appear on the market, and it will be best that you check with your PMU manufacturer to ensure the model you want to use is fully supported. That was just one of the 36 modules taken from the PMU configuration course. If you want rock solid reliable electronics and advanced functionality that will help you win races, then this course is perfect for you. You'll learn about the fundamentals of power supply design for the electronics in your project and how to classify an electrical load to determine the correct way of powering it on and off. You'll learn about what a PMU is, and how one can both simplify your power supply and wiring harness design, but give you a lot more flexibility to cater for future modifications. You'll learn about the basic logical building blocks PMUs use, and how these can be chained together to build up advanced control functions that make our cars easier to live with, safer, and faster. You'll start with the basics of power supply design and build on this knowledge with the course, working towards specifying a PMU for a project and making sure you're getting the absolute most out of the technology. If you're thinking of using a PMU in your project, but are either on the fence about whether one will be suitable or intimidated by the configuration process, this course is for you. For more information and to purchase this course, click the link to enroll now.